The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. <coughs> Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 1st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question... But you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a sea of red out there. Now, not all the sectors inside the S&P are trading lower, but all the U.S. indices that we track are. Dow's off 431, S&P 43, NASDAQ 100, 233, Russell 56, Semis 220, Tranny's 194. Gold's up 19 bucks. Silver's down 35 cents. Like recruit is up uh, 67 pennies. And natural gas is up uh, 2 cents. 30-year Treasury is up almost 2 points, printed out at 122.20. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Air Products uh, APD. It's a turkey symbol of 30 bucks, 11%. Meta, Facebook up 28 bucks, 6%. Elnylam Pharmaceuticals, 23 bucks, nearly 10%. Eli Lilly, 22 bucks, 2 and 3 tenths percent, uh, 2 and 3 quarter percent. Uh, Lithium Motors up 20 bucks, that's a 7% move. Our shakers to the downside, Lamb Research, 74 bucks, 8%. MicroStrategy, 63 bucks, 4%. Asimo Holdings, 43 bucks, 5%. Monolithic Power Systems, 42 bucks, 5%. And Mercado Libre, 40 bucks, 2.5%. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day. Let's begin our day by taking a look at, let's go to the intraday charts right away. We come back to the larger time periods. So if you give me just a moment here, we'll get towards the play by play. I uh, just got to find that tab and then we're going to go ahead and change screens. We'll go over to my white background screens out here. <clears throat> We're going to try to do that. There we go. Should see all eight panels. Great. So we've got the NQ. So let's start with the daily time frame. So the daily time frame, we've got a confirmed uh, Gartley buy pattern, confirmed by the D point. You can see that price went ahead and basically almost hit the right to the T. Maybe it did. Doesn't really matter. But you got that nice big old bullish engulfing candle yesterday. But what we also know is we know where the buyers and sellers reside, utilizing those TAS market profiles. In this case here, price was below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. So what we don't know is, is this move just a counter trend move? What we would call it at 1110 in the morning is so far that rally has been, in fact, just a counter trend move. In order to negate that uh, um, interpretation, you must see a close above 19,778. You don't have to see the close above that today, but that's where price would need to close above to suggest that this rally was more than just a counter trend move. Now, here's the bearish side of this daily time frame chart that you and I are looking at, and that's this. And that is that price that the oscillator and change line went from green to red yesterday. That tells us that the price oscillator, the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of price out there is now below zero. 
When it gets below zero, it tells us that um, prices that, that basically price is in the hands of the sellers out there. When that line changes from green to red, we typically get a test, and a test and rejection of red oscillator change line would be a bearish signal. So I would say if price closes the day below 19.522, that's the bottom of that daily profile, odds favor we could get back to retest lows from a couple of days ago. Now we'd want to see what's going on on the intraday charts out there, but that's the message of the daily time frame. We haven't looked at the weekly, we haven't looked at the monthly out there. We're just looking at more of the play-by-play. -play. Now, price is sitting at a potential level of support as we speak right now. That potential level of support is that red oscillator and change line on the five-hour time frame chart. We're just kind of going left to right so you can get the message of the markets here. So you're a key support, and, uh, um, and we are also trading with inside its profile. So if this level fails, this level be 19276, we're trading right now 19280. If price were to close below that, the next level of support would be at 19204. So those of you that are intraday day traders out there, these are numbers that you're going to really want to pay attention to. If price were to close below 19203, it adds the idea of what we looked at you and I on the daily time frame that we would likely see lower price. But we are sitting at a key level of support as we speak right now, and one additional level that is below that at 19203. We look at the four hour time frame chart. Price is sitting at a level of support. That's the bottom of its bullish structured profile. That level is at 19267. Again, we're at 19287 as we speak right now. So we can see here on the five hour, on the four hour, we're sitting at support. We're below support on the two hour, which would be at 19382. Same thing on the 60 minute time frame chart. We're below support on the 30 minute, which would have been 19,421. No bottom signals on the 10 and 15 minute basis charts. And if we look at the five minute chart out here, you'll see that we are, or it has negated a TD9 count bottom. And that would suggest lower price. However, because you and I have a view of multiple time frames, we can see support and resistance. What we know right now is the key levels for the rest of the day are gonna be on this four and five hour time frame chart with price right now, holding support. By the way, on that five hour, five hour, five minute time frame chart out there, again, a bottom was negated out there. What you're watching for here is if you start to see closes above the high of the prior bar, that would then signal to you and I, we should see a rally at least to 11, 350 and change out there. You get above that, you could actually run all the way back up to 19,575. So that's what's going on in detail if we take a look at the NQ. Why don't we do the same thing here? We got a minute, um, at least. Let me get the charts populated for the ES Mini so we get a feel for what its message to the market is for both you and I. It's gonna take a moment here to populate. We do have a couple of uh, sell the, or buy the D point patterns or Gartley buy patterns that did form inside the ES Mini. Now, unlike the NQ, its profile, daily profile, I should say is much different. Its daily profile is bearish in structure. And that bearish in structure tells us that the sellers exist between 55.95 and 56.40. What took place yesterday? We had a nice rally right up into that green oscillator and change line. Didn't get all the way up to the uh, resistance zone of 55.94, but it took care of that this morning at about, I believe, around 2.33, 3.30, something like that, inside the ES Mini. So price has found resistance, in essence, where it should, but we just have a consolidation with inside its daily profile. We come back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at the ES Mini for its five hour, its four hour, its two hour, its one hour, its 30 minute, its 15 minute, its 10 minute, and maybe even that five minute chart as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So the chart patterns for the ES Mini completely different than for the NQ. We can see on the four and five hour time frame, prices trading below support. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Either it's oscillator and change line on the five hour chart or the bottom is profile on the four hour chart, which is at 5529. Both of those are at 5529. Two hour chart or below support says 5451 is open. So the only thing that is back at support here from an intraday standpoint is a 30 minute chart. 30 minute chart forms a Rhodes-Mintum indicator top. It completes that pattern at three o'clock this morning. Uh, price moves lower, finds support at its profile. Uh, runs back up from a uh, intraday standpoint, uh, makes a new high at about 10 o'clock this morning, and then it uh, and it had a Rhodesman to indicator signal. Then we had a big old bearish engulfing candle. The key level here to be watching on this 30 minute chart that means 11 minutes from now is about 50 55 20. 55 20 is the TD9 count breakout level for this 30 minute chart for that Rhodesman to indicator top out there. Now, there's no bottoming pattern. But when you do pull back to a breakout level, in fact, that can be a bottoming pattern. So you want to watch 5520. If we see a close below 5520, that suggests lower price. Lower price to where, Steve, or where's the next level of support? That's a great uh, question. Really, that next level of support is all the way down at about the uh, 54, uh, 51 level, 54, 55 level out there. Um, on a five-minute basis, do we have anything out here? So let's take a quick peek at it. We're really getting the play-by-play. -play. And here we do have a Roach Mentum Indicator bottom. And that went ahead and completed at 11.20, so basically just a few seconds ago out there. Now, what should take place here is you should see a rally inside the ES Mini up to about the 55.25 level. If price can clear that, then it should head to its sell zone. The sell zone on a five-minute base for the ES Mini is between 55.35 and 55.43. So that would be the area to watch. If price were to close above 55.43, that would signal a further rally is likely to ensue. So different chart patterns. I'm not sure who's controlling the bus, whether it's the NQ or the ES Mini out there. 
uh, but keep your eyes on uh, both of those. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to what's going on inside the equity markets. Let's go see what's going on inside of Goldilocks out here. So we've got gold moving. Of course, gold moving probably more due to what's going on inside the Middle East out there. I heard about that uh, prisoner exchange that we might have uh, going on with Russia. Of course, a lot of people would celebrate that as a great thing. And not that that's not a great thing to get prisoners home. You just have to question the timing of everything. And you say, why is this happening right here and now? Is this because they're trying to get all that done before all holy hell breaks out? Well, <clears throat> we're going to find out in time. But if we take a look at gold, we know that gold is certainly uh, very geopolitical with regard to its moves yesterday, with, with regard to its moves, may explain a bit of uh, yesterday's move. What price has done is it is trained above the top of its daily profile right now. The top of its daily profile is 2484. <coughs> what you'd be looking for from a technical standpoint is two consecutive closes above 2484. If we get that, then we should continue to move to higher ground. The five hour time frame chart. Formed a TD9 count top yesterday at 11 o'clock in the evening. And uh, that pattern shows that the high is 2502.80. So 2502.80 is a level that you need to see price close above to suggest that gold is going to rally further. Now, maybe it's going to pull back. If it does pull back, where support. 2484 is one level, 2472 is another. And then between 2454 and 2464 would be the other areas to watch. I do not see a uh, topping. Uh, hold on a second here. The four hour chart 2496, 60, 20, uh, 2490. Oh, so it's got a TD9 count top as well. So the four and five hour chart has that. Um, Right now, the two-hour chart uh, doesn't have a, a topping, confirmed topping pattern. The 60-minute does, the price is holding support. The 60-minute chart is a Roachman indicator top. The price is holding profile support, the top of which is 2491. So although we've got some short-term tops, we take a look at the uh, bottom panel, we take a look at the four-hour, the five-hour chart out there, and even the two-hour charts trying to get into the game out here. Um, I think this means more so not to expect gold to just fall off the planet, but maybe just to kind of base sideways or so uh, for a bit out there. But watch the 2484.10 level. That's a key level, and as long as price remains above that, uh, gold is in still a, a breakout uh, bullish mode out there for at least its daily time frame. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go take a look at Lightsweet Crude. Let's do the same thing out here. So let's put up Lightsweet Crude. Then we'll take a look at some requests that have come in. Lightsweet Crude were in the September contract. That rallied yesterday. That confirmed a uh, buy the D point pattern out here or a TD9 count bottom also actually was formed uh, yesterday. And now we got price just consolidating with inside its profile. So it's open. Uh, it's just still populating. That's why I can't open up the daily just yet. But we will here in a moment. And so you you got a consolidation with inside the profile right now, support at 76.66, and resistance up at the 79.78 level out there. Um, what else can we report on? I just have to say not much, not much else that I see out there. So you got the valid TD9 count bottom, consolidation with inside the daily profile. What are the intraday charts signaling to and I? Well, if we take a look at the four-hour chart out here, I've got price testing support on this retracement. That's its oscillator and change line, which is basically where we're sitting right now. TD9 count top on the uh, two-hour chart. Price consolidating with inside its profile. Ultimate support being down at 76.52. The 30-minute time frame chart in about six minutes is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom. That bottom pattern will complete at 12 noon. That bottom pattern is completing at what appears to be above its breakout area at 76.86. I would expect or anticipate that we start to see a, another bounce inside of Lake Sweep Crude that begins between 11.30 and 12 noon out there. Now, if price closes below 76.86 and negates its TD9 count pattern, then that call that I just gave to you was simply, simply dead wrong. So that's what's going on with regard to gold, the equity markets, Lake Sweep Crude out there. And, of course, if there's something else you'd like to look at, just give me a call at 877-927-6648. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com or any ping inside the tiger's den so let's take a look at a couple of requests that have uh, come in <clears throat> the first was from alton this came in uh, yesterday i just simply had overlooked it and alton wanted to take a look at baidu now baidu 
and all things looking to, I believe, add to or take a long position out there. He was looking at that nice monthly TD9 count bottom pattern that uh, completed yesterday out there. And that suggests that we should see a rally towards the South Center and Chains line once again, say up towards the 98.54 level. However, if that is really going to happen, Alton, then you should see this TD9 cow bottom hold at day zen. And, that, and right now, price is negating that uh, pattern. A negation would be a close below 87.38. Now, the volume on that candle, that candle being July 26, was 2 million shares so far. In the first almost two hours of trading, we're down with about 869,000 shares out there. So it appears that we're going to go ahead, potentially, well, we're testing that swing point with volume out there, or very close to it. And if you get it close below that level, Alton, that level again being 87.38, you can make the case that there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Certainly, you can make the case of lower price, at least targeting its swing point from back on July 2nd which had volume of 2.6 million shares. See you with TFNM. We'll be right back. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. So uh, back to uh, Baidu out there. Alton, I think, uh, let today's activity play out. Looks like this TD9 count pattern is likely to fail. Now we're going to have to take a look at what's going on with that July 2nd swing point as price gets down and tests that low at the 8508 level. So thanks for waiting an extra day on that. Hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for your request. We do have a couple of big companies coming out with earnings today. Let's see if we can get any kind of tell there. Uh, first one being Amazon. So in the case of Amazon out here, what do we have? Well, we've got price that is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That daily profile ranged from 182.13 to 188.17 out there. I don't see anything else in the daily time frame. So if they disappoint, maybe price find support at 182.13. If price were to close below, now this would be at tomorrow. But still numbers will be out after the close today. If we did see the uh, level of 176A to get taken out, we'd see a new A to B, large A to B equals CD pattern uh, to the downside form on the daily time frame. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying that's what you would, if you saw price trade below that, close below that, come the end of uh, tomorrow there, that's what the signal would be. You do have price that is trading inside a bullish structured profile on its weekly time frame, 179.34 support there. You have a TD9 count top that's likely to form uh, uh, this month out there. But in order to do that, you need to see a price close come the end of August above 175 even Steven out there. So is there a tell here in Amazon? Not one that I see per se. So you just have to use that profile information for support and resistance. Next instrument that's coming out with earnings, I believe again today after the bell, Intel. In the case of Intel, it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern today. That being said, if in fact um, uh, that would then signal uh, with that TD9 count on a daily basis completing today, that price should go target 31.59 on a rally. Now, <clears throat> you've got that bottom pattern completing today, that TD9 count. If price takes that out, meaning we close below whatever today's low is, come tomorrow, that's going to tell us about a strong momentum move to the downside. In the case of uh, Amazon, that would get us back into the 2023 lows out there, perhaps down around the 2473 level. So is there a tell here? The answer to that is there is absolutely a tell. There's a tell that Intel should bottom today. Should it, would it, could it? Well, we'll find out come tomorrow. The last one is going to be Apple. They're out usually around 430 with their numbers. Do we have any kind of a tell here? And the answer is, well, not necessarily. But it depends on the day's close. If price is able to close above the top of its profile, which it did yesterday, 221.20, you would at least have a profile change in trend. Now, that profile change in trend could be simply just simply move up to the 226.54-ish area. That's that green oscillator and change line. If price were to close above that, then we'd be looking at a move back to its highs. If price were to close below a 215.94 level or start trading below that, that's going to bring 210.30 into play in the after-hours market. On a weekly basis out here, we just have a consolidation with inside its profiles. I don't know if that was a sell the D point top. Um, I probably have to pull this back much further. So was there, let's see, let's see out here, did Apple on a weekly basis confirm a uh, top? And to answer that question, let's just grab this line if we can. Let's extend, okay, that didn't work. So let's go with game plan B here. I don't know if it completed it, but we're going to find out here momentarily. So here is our... A to B point, not his. I don't think it's completed. The A to B equals CD pattern to the upside in, in the case of Apple. Uh, that would take us really close. You know, did it complete it? I don't think so. With price being on that left side, such a strong side out there, negated TD9 count top as well. So right now on a weekly basis, you just have a consolidation with inside its profile between 228.22 at resistance and 201.17 at support out there. And finally, let's take a quick peek at the monthly time frame. What do we have here? You do not have any kind of a topping pattern as we speak right now. So Apple on the monthly is bullish. On the weekly is uh, bullish out there. And on the daily, uh, if it can close above 221.20 at day's end, it would suggest to Stevie that Apple wants to actually trade higher after the numbers are released. So that's what's going on with those three components. Let's go to another request that came in. This is from uh, Lee. Uh, and Lee wants to take a look at uh, URA as a ticker symbol. And he's looking for a place to add. You know, Lee, right now, price is testing a TD9 count bottom on its daily time frame. That was a candle session from July 25th. 
The uh, volume on that candle session was 3.8 million shares. So far today, we are down with 2 million shares. So you're pushing into that swing point. You're testing that swing point with volume. Let's open up the daily time frame chart. So that is not an ideal situation. Now, maybe that TD9 count still holds at day's end. I do see we are also have triggered wave number seven. That's letter G. That requires a higher low to confirm that pattern. So ideally, what you would get at day's end inside of URA is price would close back above 26.41. That TD9 count would hold. Now, because price is pushing into that swing point with volume, that would suggest another test of that low. So even if you get the rejection on price, you won't have a rejection on volume, but you would have a TD9 count that's held out there. And, um, and you've got wave number seven that's been triggered. So there's still potential out there. But I think you've got to wait to see how the day plays out. And you don't even have to really wait to see how the day plays out. Why? Because we're pushing that swing point with volume out there. And it says that price should get back and test that, uh, whether that's tomorrow, whether that's Monday. That I can't say. On a weekly time frame, you have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. The B point had volume. That was a trading week of June 28th, 13 million shares. We closed below that last week with about 13 million shares. This week so far, we're at 13 million shares. So now on a weekly basis, what URA is saying is that it is forming an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That would look something like this. There's your A to B point. We'll move this over here. And so you are already at the one-to-one -one level. What that says then is in order to get a uh, bullish signal, you need to see a bullish reversal candle form inside of URA. Otherwise, Price would like to, to extend itself towards 1.272 expansion, which I don't have on my system, on this system right here. What we can do, though, instead of having to worry about that, is look for the next area of support. And the next area of support would be a 2589. That's the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. So there's potential here, but let this play out today. Uh, see what happens tomorrow. Do you get a test and rejection of that candle session? That's bar number eight on my daily time frame on lighter volume. And then if you do, then you would have a place to go ahead and consider adding to your position out there. And then I'd say if price closed below 25.89, I think that that call would be just simply incorrect. Uh, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, Dan in New York City wants to take a look at a couple of instruments out here. I don't, I didn't have those programmed in just yet. So let's take a look at those. The first one being Freeport MacMoran, FCX. Now, when you do trade Freeport MacMoran, you certainly want to be paying attention to what's going on with the Aussie dollar. I won't put that up on our screen right now. I don't have those charts that are set up that easily. But if you do go back and take a look at that, Dan from New York City, you'll see a direct correlation, a very direct correlation. When you are trading FCX, you're trading the Australian dollar. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back and finish up with start taking a look at FCX. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So I put up the chart on our screen here. The top portion is the Australian dollar. <coughs> And the bottom portion is FCX. If you take a look at my uh, crosshair out there, you'll see uh, you got the Australian dollar forming high on July 12th. Same thing with regard to FCX out here. Um, and you just see that this has just got a great directional correlation. So really, when you're trading FCX, you are really trading the Australian dollar. Now, let's switch off of this page here. Let's go take a look at the actual charts. In fact, what I did was I put up the Australian dollar. We'll go back to FCX. So we take a look at the Australian dollar. It's got a TD9 count bottom that went ahead and uh, formed on July 26. It was the low of July 25th that was bar number eight of that pattern. That is the key level out there. It closed below that low, which is 0.6514. It's then going to suggest that the Australian dollar wants to head lower. You can see on a weekly time frame, the Australian dollar trading below profile support out there. And that opens up 64.76 coming when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. So you really want to watch the Australian dollar today, Dan. And if you get a close, whether it's today, tomorrow, if you get a close below that 0.6514, that tells you that the Aussie dollar wants to head lower. So we've got a TD9 count bottom here on the Aussie dollar. What do we have on FCX? I won't be surprised to see a TD9 count bottom. Guess what we have? A TD9 count bottom. Its low actually took place on bar number nine, and that was on that July 25th uh, date out there. So that key low is what you'd be watching. The price were to close below that low, which is 43.27. So if you get the Aussie dollar that closes below and negates its TD9 count bottom, and FCX does the same thing, that would require a close below 43.27. Then price is headed lower. Now headed lower to where? Well, the next level of support for FCX on its weekly time frame isn't much further. It's down at 43.02. It would be a close blow 43.02 that would then bring 36.75 into play out there. The monthly chart supports the idea of lower price inside of FCX out there. Why? Because we closed last month below its bullish structured monthly profile. We did that yesterday. So that's a bearish signal out there. So I'd be watching that daily TD9 count bottom. I would also be watching the Australian dollar. And that will give you the answer uh, that you'd be looking for for FCX. So I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks for your request. So you had one more request. Let's get that. That was P-A-L-L -L out here. Pal. So uh, give me a moment. I need to do just one thing. And I'll be back with you. Uh, okay. That's not PAL. Sorry about that. Let's actually take a look at the PAL charts out there. And that is um, Palladium. It's an ETF for Palladium. So we take a look at this ETF. We're trading below red oscillator and change on, below daily profile support. That suggests a further move lower. 
I would say its price target would be at least a swing point from June the 18th, the high of which out there is at 82.25 volume, 74,000 shares. Today you're pulling back with 34,000 shares already. So you're moving into that swing point with some volume out there. On a weekly time frame, you have a consolidation with inside its profile. So it's a potential that it has bottom from a consolidation standpoint, and that's at 81.77. Uh, if that low doesn't get taken out on a weekly basis, maybe you could rally to 88.15, even 94.52. On a, a monthly time frame, you just have a consolidation with inside its profile. No bottom pattern that has been confirmed as we speak just yet. So with regard to Palladium, 81.77 is going to be the key area out there. If price gets below that, you're likely to see further lows inside of PA double L. So Dan in New York City, thanks so much for your request. Hope that that helped you out. Let's go take a look at MRNA is for ELO inside the Tiger's Den. And Moderna is, uh, well, gap to the downside this morning. Let's go step back to the larger charts out here. We are trading inside. It's uh, consolidated inside its monthly profile. The key level of support here, because this is a uh, bearish structured profile that price closed above for more than two consecutive, for at least two consecutive sessions out there. Um, the key level of support is going to be, if it's just a counter trend move to the downside, 94.65. So ELO, you got to watch 94.65. If price starts trading below that, of course that's a monthly time frame, uh, but still, if price breaks through that level. Um, that's going to suggest lower price. So that's the first thing that I would be looking at. That's coming from the monthly time frame. The weekly time frame shows us that price is trading below the bottom of its profile. That's a bullish structured profile. So it closed tomorrow below 106.42, opens up the door for Moderna to get down to 73.25. So that becomes another price target. Again, what you'd be watching for is that monthly uh, center of that profile first at 94.65. Again, the close below that, we're likely headed to 73 and a quarter. And finally, let's go ahead and open up the daily time frame chart, get a feel. The daily time frame chart looks to me like it's confirming an A to B equals CD pattern, A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So let's go ahead and draw that in. We'll give you what that approximate, um, and I do mean approximate uh, value is. I'm just going to move this over, I'll try to move this over to the high, close to it. Now let's see, whereabouts does that one-to-one -one level get us to? The one-to-one -one gets us down to about the $73 and change level. So you've got a daily $73 target, weekly $73.25 target, and all that will come to fruition if, in fact, price starts trading below the center of that uh, bearish structured monthly profile, and that number, again, 94.65. So I hope that helps you out, ELO, with regard to Moderna out there. Be careful with it. GTE wrote in and said, uh, basically, he sees that there are crashes that take place in the market. He's referring to international markets out there in September. Of course, we're in August right now. That may be just a little bit of preparation. You know, if we take a look at just the S&P 500, we just simply start there. Let's open up the S&P 500 uh, chart. And let's see, we've got 96 years worth of data. So what we can see out here, GTE, is if you look at the very bottom right-hand panel, you'll see the months that are unfavorably, uh, from a seasonal standpoint, they're, they're un meaning they typically trade lower. And September is that big month. That's whether it sets over a 96. Now, by the way, that's a 96-year period of time. If we take a look at the current chart that we're in, we typically don't get a top inside of the uh, ES or the S&P 500 until right after Labor Day, sometime after that first week in September out there. So is there going to be a crash or not? When we come back, you're asking about September. If I see, let's say, Rhodes Mintum Indicator tops or TD9 count tops, uh, maybe even to sell the D point top for the daily, weekly, and monthly, then the answer to that is that is when the uh, market for that instrument would be most susceptible to that. Now that's over a 96 year period of time for the ES, for the S&P 500, how about a 25 year period of time? 25 year period of time, you can see September, still a very ugly month out there. Now in this case here, this says the top over 25 years could have come in uh, at the end of uh, July. I believe our tops are towards the middle of July, not the end of July, but that we use this more as a guideline. Uh, out there. So that's the S&P 500. Uh, you were asking about, let me see if I've got some of the international markets up here. Uh, do I have the Hang Seng, the Nikkei I've got, CAC 40, DAX. Um, I don't see it, but let's try out here. Dang. We do have it. 
So if we take a look at the Hang Seng, which I believe was one of the instruments, what we have for the Hang Seng is 60 years worth of data. And again, you're just kind of focused here on the uh, bottom panel out there. Now, in its case, the Hang Seng typically forms a high. This is over a 60 year period, basically as of yesterday. I believe the Hang Seng actually formed a low. I'll try to pull those charts up as we go to this break. Steve Rhodes with TFN. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. I answered GT's question about the Hang Seng and a market crash. And we took a look at the seasonal, which typically tops out like around yesterday. Instead, what we have is a bottom that uh, formed two days ago. It was the uh, TD9 count bottom that went ahead and completed. <coughs> Price is above that red asset and change line. <coughs> Looks to me more like the Hang Seng wants to rally up to 17.864 than wants to fall off the cliff out there. Next request coming in from Dan. Wanted to take a look at the uh, short on the semis via SOXS. I believe that is a 3X out there. Typically, we would just take a look at the indice out here to get a better feel. What I can share with you, Dan, is if we take a look at the weekly time frame, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom, same thing on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame, the reason I'm looking at that is because you've got profile resistance here at the 2725 level. Uh, if price can close above that level on a weekly basis, you, you should see a move to 3495 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at the socks. Next request coming in from uh, Roger, who wants to take a look at arm holdings. 
Arm Holdings is trading an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside. Its next price target is its next TD Nankow breakout level. That's at 110.38. It formed a Rogemintum indicator top. The weekly has a Rogemintum indicator top. It has a TD Nankow top. And price right now is trading below the uh, bottom of its bullish structured profile. 108.69 is its price target. That's its TD Nankow breakout level. There's not enough data on the monthly time frame for you are your eye to be able to get any kind of read. So lower price uh, for ARM 10869 to 11038 being the likely price objectives out there. You also want to take a look at Qualcomm QCOM. Let's see if we get these charts here to populate in just a few seconds time before we go off the air out there. And um, um, come on, baby. Come on. Okie dokie. So, uh, Oh, if you want to see a, uh, I, I didn't pull it up, folks, but if you want to see one of the best examples of an island reversal top at all-time highs, go take a look at the daily chart for the Nikkei. In the case of Qualcomm, looks like its next price target out here. Roger is going to be, what, 161.73? 162.45 is the bottom of its bull structured weekly profile. Keep your eye on that number, 162.45. You close below that, we'll get to 161.73. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks so much for joining me, putting up with my hack. I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Take care.